Good day guys, it's Drifts and Lifts here. All right, so today we're going to go mess around with the black wagon. So it's at my parents' house. Um, so if you guys have been watching my channel, you may have seen uh, probably about three months back, I bought that turbo manual black wagon. So I mentioned it in my last video, you know, asking you guys what I should do with it and uh, if I should turn it into an A tractor and turn it into a truck, that kind of thing. So um, I'm gonna go start tinkering with it today. Um, I'm gonna bring over a battery because the battery's completely flat in it. And actually just two days ago, I went over there and uh, when I brought it home, it really wasn't running very good. So I managed to actually drive it like half an hour all the way home. And uh, yeah, it really, something was wrong with it. And the guy had mentioned that the harmonic balancer might be separating. So okay, I, I started there because uh, that was his suggestion and I pulled the harmonic balancer off the thing and it was just completely separated. Like literally none of the accessory belts were even turning. The crank would turn and the rubber in between um, the, crank, the crank pulley down there was completely separated. So uh, no wonder that it was overheating. No wonder the power steering wasn't working. No wonder the alternator wasn't charging. Basically it just makes your car useless. So I took my spare one off this spare motor I have over here. It's just a random B230 I got and I went and put it on and it seemed to have fixed the running issue so the car runs fine now and I haven't been able to take it down the block or anything and drive it because the oil is like super old and that car had been sitting for a long time in an undercover uh, storage so basically yeah that's what I'm gonna do I'm gonna go bring this battery from Goldie I'm gonna start it up I'm gonna do an oil change on it and uh, I'm also gonna drive it down the road doesn't have insurance on it, but I can just quickly cruise it up and down the road at my parents' house there and uh, see how good it is. So that'll be the start of the, uh, the black wagon build. I know the engine mounts on it are absolutely gone. Like you can shake the motor. So that's gonna be something that needs attention ASAP. Um, today I just wanna drive it down the street and kinda see how it feels. I know the motor is probably pretty tired, but maybe it has enough life left in it that it's worth keeping in there and you know, putting it through its paces for a little while until it does blow. Um, yeah, the motor has 420,000K along with the chassis and the, the guy who owned it before me, really nice guy, Gordon. And uh, yeah, he had mentioned that the harmonic balancer was going, but he didn't think that was like the full problem and the car was overheating and stuff like that literally just because the water pump wasn't turning. So uh, I don't know what they were thinking, but they put a little, uh, they still drove it around for a while and the guy's brother drove it around for a while and he actually got like a little coolant light installed when the coolant would get low simply because it was boiling over. So they drove it around with the water pump not turning for so long and uh, I'm hoping it didn't permanently, you know, give like a, a head gasket blow or something like that. So, but you know, the coolant seems pretty clean. The oil still, uh, still seems pretty clean. So I hope it's not too far gone. I can maybe save it. Um, the oil in it's just some shitty old 1030. So I brought a good jug of 1540. That's the stuff I really like to run in the red blocks. And uh, some Lucas oil stabilizer. That stuff's also really good for an old motor. You know, it helps bring your compression back a little bit, thickens up the oil. So yeah, guys, we're gonna cruise over there. And uh, yeah, let's film kind of how it goes. So hope you liked the video. All right, so I just got to my parents' house here. Here is the black wagon. So it's been sitting here for a while and uh, you know, it's got some grime all over it. But honestly, the paint could be cleaned up to be really nice. And I'm stoked to start tinkering with this thing. It's my mom and my girlfriend. <laughs> they keep me in check. Make sure I don't go too crazy. So, uh, yeah guys, I'm gonna pop open the hood, put a new battery in it, put it on the road, I'm gonna change the oil in it, and uh, then I'm gonna take it for a cruise down the street. So, um, yeah, let's do that. So there we go, I put the new battery in it, and it started right up, which is good. Now, if you guys listen, it's a little on the loud side. I wouldn't like the valves and stuff to be so tickety. So I'm hoping that with the thicker oil that I put in it, it's gonna help that. 
Um, the motor might just be kind of tired and there's nothing I can do about it. I could give it a valve adjustment or something like that. But uh, so I'll put it on the road and we'll change the oil to some thicker stuff. And then uh, once it's all warmed up and stuff, I'll take it for a cruise down the street and we'll see how this thing drives. Cause last time I drove it with the harmonic balancer being completely screwed up. Actually, I'll show you guys right now. Check this out. One sec. Here, baby, man, holding the camera. Okay, so this is a two-piece harmonic balancer. Look at that, that's not supposed to happen. So the crank was turning, but the accessory belts weren't. So uh, that would definitely be the problem that it gave me. Um, so I put the new one in and it actually runs, you know, somewhat fine now. So uh, yeah, we'll see if we can make this thing have a second life. There we go. She's up on jack stands. So I can take the oil out now. Oh man, just looking at this. It's a shame this thing got neglected the way it did. It's a shame that <laughs> they didn't understand that the harmonic balancer could fail that bad and drove it for so long, overheating every day. Uh, I have little hope in this engine still being good, but you never know, it is a red block. so. <laughs> It might have beat the odds and uh, somehow survived through that. But we'll see how it goes. So I'm gonna pop the oil out. I do not wanna drop grimy old oil all over my parents' driveway. So I'll be careful when I do this. Oh, that is so black and dirty. Oh my God. Look at that, guys. Yep, it's been a long time. I bet you. Oh, this oil feels like really watery. Um, so yeah, it didn't have all that much in it, I don't believe. It was probably low on oil, it probably, oh man, poor thing. There you go. Mm, tranny mount looks a little shitty too. The engine mounts on this car are just haggard. I can basically like move the engine with a little tiny bit of force. So I'm just gonna throw a, uh, a jug of milk. Actually, it's iced tea. Uh, yeah, so these red blocks, they really like to run on iced tea in the oil. <laughs> That'd be pretty ridiculous. But uh, no, this is 1540 Lucas oil, not iced tea. So um, actually, I got this. this. This jug of oil is courtesy free oil from my buddy Terry who works at Lordco. They had one of the jugs like, and it started leaking. So uh, obviously they couldn't sell that. So he kind of like gave it to me after hours <laughs> in a milk jug. Actually, it's a jug of distilled water. But that's what you want for uh, track days is distilled water, not normal water. Because if you let it sit in there too long, it'll rust out all your shit. So yeah, and then here's uh, the Lucas oil stabilizer. I really like this stuff because, um, I don't know, red blocks, they seem, they seem to like thicker oil. Uh, usually quiets down the valve tap, and usually if they have piston slap, it can help that out as well. So, I like to throw the heavy duty Lucas oil stabilizer in there for sure. And this car, if any car is gonna need it, this is gonna be one of them, because um, I have a pretty good hunch that the piston rings are a little old on this, and you know, you can actually, well, with that old oil in it, I could see some pretty good blow-by out with the oil cap here. Uh, that's a good way to not have a for sure idea, but it's a good way to kind of, you know, check if the, uh, how, well, the condition of the engine, because if you have the engine running and you put this oil cap on like that, if the oil cap's hopping around like this, you generally know you got some blow by, but if it's nice and secure to that and it doesn't move, you generally know your engine is uh, in pretty good shape. So this one, when I did that, when it was running, it was hopping around a bit, but like, like I said, that could have been the really old, degraded 15, or sorry, it's 1030 that they had in here before. So um, I'm gonna th throw the good stuff in, and uh, hopefully she isn't quite as loud and runs a little better. All right, the new oil is in now. So uh, red blocks, they take about 3.7 liters uh, give or take usually if you have an oil cooler so on the turbo models 
Um, it'll take a little more because the oil cooler obviously holds a little bit. Um, in this case, I didn't use all the oil because obviously I added partially stabilizer. And one thing I've learned in my years of uh, red block ownership and after owning about 24 of these cars, I found that overfilling is worse than underfilling. Now on the other hand, when you overfill them, what I usually find happens is uh, all of the excess oil comes up through your PCV tube, which then goes into your pre-turbo. So as you can see, that's probably the case here because look at all the crud all over the turbo. It's just caked in oil. So it comes there and then the turbo blades spit all this oil. It goes through into the intercooler. The intercooler on these cars usually fills right up with oil. If, uh, if you're new to 740 turbo ownership, take the intercooler out. It's only that bolt, that bolt, and this clamp, that clamp, and it just slides right out the top there. If you haven't done it yet, take it out and dump all the oil out. There's gonna be tons usually, almost like nine out of 10 turbo red blocks that I pull apart. The intercooler always has oil in it. So um, that's going into your intake system. It's not the end of the world, but uh, it's gonna you know dirty up your throttle body and things like that pretty quickly. So yeah, guys, we got the new oil in it. I'm gonna drop it down on the ground and uh, actually no, let's, let's start it up right now and see how it reacts. Ding, ding. All right. Yeah, yeah. Maybe not a lot better, but definitely an improvement. You can hear the valves aren't so noisy and tappity now. So uh, let's see, check a rev here. Yeah. Hey, at least it's responsive. It doesn't bog out when I rev it or anything. So um, yeah, I'll put it on the ground and we'll take it up and down the block and see how it reacts. All right, we are in here now. Let's see how this goes. <laughs> wow, I'm not used to a hydraulic clutch. All the turbo models generally had a hydraulic clutch on them. Uh, I've been driving the NA car and those came with a cable clutch and wow, is it ever so easy to push this clutch in. Also, I gotta remember that this thing is just like, probably another 700 pounds heavier than that car. So it's gonna feel like an absolute boat. Uh, power steering works like it didn't before. I got no sway bars hooked up right now because I borrowed the one off this one for a little bit of a clunk in the back. Nah. Oh wow, I can feel turbo boost. Wow, that's pretty cool. Okay, okay. I think the clunks I'm hearing are um, just from the sway bar actually. Okay, so if we, here if I'll hold the camera with this hand, if we pin it. Oh, this thing actually goes pretty good. Oh wow. That's not bad. I'd say it's already faster than, uh, I'd say it's faster than the NA truck already. Wow, imagine if this thing was a truck. It's only like stock boost and shit. Actually, you know what? This car has the Turbo Plus package, so it's running about 10 pounds of boost. Um, that would be really fun with like 15 pounds. I'm surprised, like this motor's tired, but it still has life in it, I think. Might be worth just getting like a valve adjustment. Um, another thing I'll mention, guys, is the guy that owned this before me, he had said that he got the head ported at one time, and uh, he has an actual printout from Mission Speedway, which is our local drag strip, of him running a 15 second flat quarter mile time in, uh, I think it was back in 2001, in this wagon, fully loaded with everything in the back. So, um, hmm, that could actually be pretty decent. Not a bad car. Maybe it's not a bad car. Maybe I can still save it. Huh, sweet. All right, so I'd say that is a pretty successful test drive. It actually hit boost and the car, even with how heavy it is, stock wagon, it's got full interior and it's even got tons of stuff in the back. Like this is right loaded up, spare tires, rims and things. So um, I'd say that's a pretty successful test drive, guys. I think maybe this engine is worth actually, you know, 
keeping in here and kind of running it till it dies. So uh, that is the end of the video. Um, hope you guys liked it. No drifting, but hey, I can't do a drifting video every time. Um, next video, I'll try to make a good street drifting video though. So yeah, guys, uh, things that come on the channel, I'm going to be starting uh, my procedures with this car. So uh, that means, you know, eventually I'll put insurance on it and uh, I'll start cleaning it up, you know, going through the whole kind of process, <laughs> the whole process of a dirty, unmaintained, neglected Volvo to drifts and lift spec, which is a dirty, somewhat maintained drift Volvo. So, uh, <laughs> which I, I'd say is better than what it usually comes as. So um, yeah, I said on my last video that I was gonna choose the best, uh, the best like and subscribe for insert Volvo quote here. So a guy named Ludacris Films is a sick fuck, just like myself, but he's a really sick fuck because he says like and subscribe for smelly Volvo dick cheese. Yummy. Imagine eating. Never mind. Um, so make sure to check out my online store. The link is in the description of this video. All right, so I'm coming out with an incredible shirt. Um, at the time of filming this, I'm not too sure if it's gonna be out when I post the video tomorrow, but if it is, just make sure you check the store because uh, it's gonna be an amazing shirt. My buddy Pencil Fingers, Davis Graham, um, he's an incredible artist, graphic designer. He does album covers for famous rappers. He's done ones for Yellow Wolf, The Underachiever, stuff like that, um, if you guys are into rap music. I like all kinds of music, but rap is one of my, uh, one of my faves. So yeah, Davis is designing me basically a Volvo, Volvo Drift Ale shirt. So it's drifts and lifts. Um, it's basically like you know a beer can, but full decked out in Volvo Drift stuff and drifts and lifts. And uh, it's got a picture of me in the A-Tractor going sideways in a cartoony form. So it's gonna be an unreal shirt. I'm gonna cop one myself and rock it because it's gonna be super dope. And uh, yeah, guys, so make sure you check out the link in the description of this video, uh, Teespring, my online store where I sell that stuff. And um, yeah, make sure you check out the patron as well. I know, uh, I know <clears throat> the patron isn't as popular, but I really appreciate everyone that has donated so far. Um, you guys are what keeps me going. All my other subscribers, thank you guys so much. Um, yeah, couldn't do this without you guys. So again, like and subscribe for smelly Volvo dick cheese. Gnarly. Peace out, guys.